This is Felix, my panther chameleon, and this is his penis that fell out. Unfortunately, we had to cut it, or to be more precise, it had to be surgically removed. But to explain how we got to this point, we need to go to the very beginning. And I feel like this is going to be the last video featuring Felix, because our little buddy is getting old and his health is unfortunately deteriorating as the time goes on. I got him as a baby in September of 2018, and his birth certificate doesn't mention the exact date of hatching, but it is dated at January of 2018, which makes him almost four and a half years old. Some sources on Google say that males in captivity can average three to five years of age, with extreme exceptions of eight to nine, while other sources mention five to seven years, so it is safe to say that he would now definitely be a grandpa in chameleon world. And since I tried to provide him with the best possible care, it would be expected of him to live for at least one to two years more, but considering his health, that will most likely be impossible. You see, back in 2018, I recorded the first video of him, showing him off to the world, and in that video I attempted to feed him for the very first time. The cool thing about about the chameleons is the fact that they can inject their tongue to grab their prey, which can reach almost two times of their body length. But Felix didn't really want to cooperate, and he only tried to inject his tongue once uh, I brought the roach close to him, and even then he completely misses it, injecting his tongue too far up. At that time I thought that is because he is still small and scared, that he needs to acclimate to his enclosure, but every feeding attempt after that ended up the same way. He would attempt to catch his prey, once he failed he would just give up. So in order to actually feed him I had a mug with roaches under his plant, so when I wasn't close around he would just climb down and eat out of that mug. And I was happy that he was eating, still thinking that there is nothing to worry about. He was still young and scared of me. Every time I would approach, he would hide behind the branch he was on. And as I would move to see him, he would actually move constantly to have a branch in between us, which was <laughs> really hilarious to see. It took around two years for him to lose that fear, but once he did, he always tried to reach for me to be carried and I would approach his enclosure and I was really happy about that. But still, his tongue situation did not improve, and I was worried, but his overall health seemed great, he was always super active, he could use his tail, he always had an excellent appetite, so nothing else was problematic. He had an open enclosure with misking misting system that kept humidity up, he had a dripping system, an Arcadia UVB and heat spot and LED light, a massive space to move around and enjoy, and it seemed like he was enjoying it a lot. Around November last year I noticed that he was kind of dragging his tail and he wasn't actively using it to grab on branches and stuff, but when I would mess with it he would still curl it up, you see, like this. I thought that maybe he's not getting enough UVB light exposure, so therefore I lowered his light fixture, but unfortunately that didn't help with the situation, the situation got worse. In January this year I noticed he was holding on branches very poorly with his back legs and even though he was still able to grab on things, he would slowly lose grip and begin to hang only on his front legs. I was worried that he would fall off, so I placed him in a smaller enclosure, hoping that with direct exposure to UVB he will get better, because I assumed that the problem was the size of his enclosure and the fact that not all of it is exposed to UVB, so therefore I also improved it with additional UVB and heat spot. But even after a few weeks spent in that smaller enclosure, his situation didn't improve and I decided to take him to the wet to hopefully figure out what's wrong. I had to drive to the capital of Croatia, Zagreb, because only there I could find a wet that could work on chameleons. They did the x-ray and blood tests and it turned out that his phosphorus and calcium levels are fine, which means that UVB exposure and supplementation weren't the problem, but the thing that caused the problems, I mean that were causing the problems, were bad kidneys. Veterinarian told me that on the x-ray she could see some really old fractures that are from like when he was a baby and that together with the fact that his tongue didn't work good from the start shows that he most likely had an MBD from the very young age 
and his overall health was not good. So therefore now, as he's getting old, all of that is starting to take its toll. The reason why he's losing grip on his back legs is most likely because his kidneys are now swollen and pressing on the spine, which is causing the pain. So he uh, received the therapy that I was giving him for a week and a half, but that unfortunately didn't change the situation, so I had to keep him in that small enclosure. Fast forward to like a month ago, I was working here in the dark den and Maya called me that something is wrong with Felix. He's actually upstairs uh, in my living room. She called me that something is wrong with him and it was a horrifying sight because something was hanging from his back and at first I thought that his intestines fell out. Thankfully it was just his penis, which is not an alarming thing because they do that sometimes but it looked like he cannot pull it back in. So I quickly googled to find out what is going on and read that you can try to return it with a Q-tip and water-based lubricant, but there was just no way of me doing that. I mean, it was just too far out and too swollen, but I tried. And since it was late at night, I couldn't just take him to the wet, but I had to make sure that his penis doesn't dry out overnight, so I covered it with wet towel and I took him to the wet first thing in the morning. A few hours later he finally went to surgery and thankfully everything went well. Uh, they successfully put everything back inside, but he had to stay there for a few days so they could monitor him. And unfortunately the whole situation wasn't over yet because two days later I got a call from Vets telling me that his penis again fell out and unfortunately the only situation, the only solution to the problem seems to be to cut it off. Once again I had to sign the approval for the surgery and the anesthesia because of his old age there is a chance that he will never wake up from the anesthesia but thankfully he did and once again the surgery went okay. So once again I drove to Zagreb to pick him up, he again received therapy that I was giving him for a week and a half and here we are now. He is now visibly weaker than he was, he is kinda shaky. But thankfully he still got appetite, he still poops uh, and he showed me that before I started to record this video. Oh, he's pooping like right now. <laughs> Nasty. But he'll for sure spend the rest of his life inside of this enclosure without substrate or without anything to climb on. Also if you look on his eye, he got something over there, you see? That is the eye that he was keeping closed sometimes. And now it looks like something, some sort of tissue is growing over there. Yeah, Felix, old age sucks, right? Also, he got some sort of bump over there. And he never shed properly on that area. You see? Some sort of bump. Oh, poor, poor Felix. And there is that. There is really not much to say. It really saddens me to see him this way. And I only hope that he's not in, in some great pain. That is the only thing that I hope. So if, if you plan to get some sort of exotic animal, some sort of... Keep this in mind. Health problems, health complications are a, a real thing that can happen. And you just need to be prepared for that. Not to mention that I spent more on veterinarian bills for him than on my medical bills in like five years. I don't know. So... Keep that in mind and see you again next week. Bye.